Hi there guys and welcome to the Q&A. So on my Instagram story, I asked you guys to basically ask me for anything. So what I'm going to do now is just go through all of the questions that I received one by one. So the first question is from Aziz Graham. Apologies, to be fair, I probably won't even go through all the names because I'll just butchered a lot of them. But the question is, how can I hire a good virtual assistant who can do the outreach for me? Now, one big misconception, in my opinion, about virtual assistants is that they already know what to do and there are already sort of uh, type A virtual assistants out there. In my opinion, the best, VA are, the best VAs are the ones that you train up yourself. So what I would recommend you do is do the outreach yourself, create a standard operating procedure of that whole process, and then once you've perfected that, hire a VA and then basically let the VA do exactly what you've taught them to do. An easy way to create standard operating procedures is with an app called Scribe How. Scribe How will basically work in the background while you're working away. So for example, let's say you have Scribe How turned on. It's a Google Chrome plugin. I think it's like $29 a month if you're on the pay program, but there's also a free version available. What it will do is it will log what you're doing, where you are clicking on, what you are typing, and then on the background, it will basically create a Google Doc for you. So let's say you're doing outreach, and the first thing you do is, let's say you're doing Instagram outreach, for example. You click on Instagram, you log into your Instagram profile, you then click on the search bar, and then you type in your ideal client. So let's say you are going for fashion and apparel, etc and you type in Nike, and then the Nike Instagram page obviously pops up, you click on the little drop down menu, and then you get um, accounts that look like or are very similar to Nike. You then go to each, each account individually and you send them a message. All of those process, all those steps from logging into your Instagram, typing in Nike, clicking on the drop down menu, will then be logged in the background, and then with Scribe How, you'll basically have like step one, click on Instagram, step two, click on the search bar, step three, type in Nike, and so on and so forth. Once you've perfected that process for yourself, you can then hand that over to a virtual assistant that can do that on your behalf. Okay, so next question is from Aziz Graham. Again, can you explain what paid funnel builds are? Okay, that's a random question, but basically a funnel is the customer journey either from left to right or from top to bottom. It depends how you want to look at it. So at the top, the top of the funnel, where obviously the funnel is the largest, you have people that are not necessarily aware of your brand, not necessarily aware of you know what the solution is that you are offering. And then the lower down the funnel they get, the more informed they are and the more they are willing to make that buyer's decision. So let's say you are setting up a paid funnel for your own agency, then the top of the funnel will be people that are not aware of the solution that you're offering, not aware of your service, but are just seeing the ads. When they click through to the ads, they obviously go onto your landing page, which means they're a bit more informed on what it is that you do. So then they are a bit lower into the funnel. Now, of course, when they see your landing page or your website, they're going to make a decision. Do I want to continue down this website and see what it is that they're offering? Or is it something that I am not interested in? Those people that are not interested will then leave the website, which means that a smaller percentage of people that have clicked on your ads will actually be on the website or will click you know, through onto the next step of the website. So that is why the funnel gets smaller the deeper down into the funnel you get or the further into the customer journey you get because less and less people are interested. And obviously the goal is to make that funnel profitable. So if we can get one person to convert out of the 100 people that are viewing our funnel, then we can work out, okay, how much have we spent to get 100 people into the funnel and how much have we generated from those 100 people? If that math equation adds up and you are profitable, then obviously you can scale up that funnel. If not, then you know that you need to basically work on the funnel and see if you can get it to become profitable. So hope that answers your question. Then the third question is from Martijn. Best book you've ever read? That is a very tough question. I already So while I was discussing the previous questions, I've already seen as like in the back of my mind, I was like, what, what book is it gonna be? What book am I gonna talk to you guys about? It is a very difficult one. There are a lot of good books that I have read. Um, I'll probably show you guys some B-roll now off the bookshelf. I've probably read like 90% of these books. There are a few books that I've, uh, I've purchased and have not yet read. Um, there's a few that spring to mind. The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. 
is one book that really changed the game for me in terms of perception of how the world works. So that book made me realize that you don't necessarily need to work a nine to five job until you're 60 and then retire and only from that point onwards can you, um, you know, can you basically be happy in life. That book made me realize that you can also design a life of your choosing and start building a life towards what it is that you actually want. And what, what that end goal is for you is different for everyone else. So there is no good or bad. If you want to travel the world, that is fine. Just build a life around that. If you want to build a figure business, completely fine as well. Just build a life around that and so on and so forth. The second book that was probably most influential to me is The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. Basically, that book summarizes what a master's of business administration would entail if you were to do the program or do the course. So basically, by reading that book, you no longer need to do a master's because you already have all the information apart from that piece of paper that obviously proves that you've done a master's. Now, with me and a lot of people that read that book, we don't necessarily need that piece of paper because we are... Um, you know, entrepreneurs, for lack of a better word, you know, we set our own online businesses up. So we don't necessarily need a piece of paper to prove our worth. So the book basically, you know, does the job and basically provides me with the information that I needed. So those two books are probably most influential. Um, in terms of best books I've read this year, uh, that will never work. The Netflix story was a very, very entertaining book and it really put everything into perspective because Netflix has been around since 1997, if I remember correctly, which is very strange when you think about it because if you think about Netflix, you think it's only been around for a couple of years. But for a company to, to, to exist for that long and only have success in the latter stages of that sort of cycle, just puts everything into perspective and it makes you realize that you know, there's a lot more that goes into running an actual business, a lot more that goes into successful companies than meets the eye. So I really enjoyed that book and highly recommend you guys read it if you have not done so already. Another question from David Aliyev. Uh, when do I horizontally scale my ads on Facebook? So for those that do not know, you have horizontal scaling and you have vertical scaling. Just to make things simple, when you vertically scale, you just increase the ad budget of that ad set or uh, campaign. If you horizontally scale, then you duplicate that ad set or campaign, depending on whether you use ABO or CBO. Most instances when this you know, is discussed, we are talking about ABO, and then it's basically the question of whether or not you increase the ad spend on an ad set or you just duplicate that whole ad set in its entirety. It depends on personal preference, that, you know, obviously first, but I also think it depends on how quickly you want to scale up. So what I recommend everyone do is increase or decrease the budget by 20% or less. Now, again, this is up for debate. A lot of media buyers out there say that it does not really matter if you reset the learning phase, etc. I have noticed from my own personal experience that if I increase the budget or decrease the budget by more than 20%, that it does sort of F up my uh, campaigns and that for the next few days from that point onwards, I have, you know, the results are up and down basically. So if I want to increase the budget by more than 20%, then I will horizontally scale. So I'll just duplicate the entire ad set and then you've basically increased that that budget by 100% because rather than having one ad set spending 50 a day, you'll have two ad sets spending 50 a day, which means that you'll be spending 100 a day. So personal preference and then how quickly do you want to scale? Next question from Saku Antaro. I'm, I'm just gonna stop with these names, guys. Apologies. Any advice for people doing digital marketing and working in nine to five at the same time? Um, so obviously during the hours of nine to five, you cannot take any calls which means that you'll need to do one of two things. Either take calls with businesses in a different time zone where the hours from 5 till 9 p.m. at night for you um, are daytime for them. So for example, if you're in Europe and you are working a nine to five, you can take on or be in contact with clients from the US, for example, where, you know, obviously because of the time zone difference, if you take calls later in the day, it's earlier in the day for them. Or you can get a sales guy to take those calls on your behalf. Whether you're working a nine to five or not in terms of fulfillment and work-wise shouldn't really matter because if you run an agency properly, uh, if you do the fulfillment yourself, it doesn't really take that much time. The only issue with the nine to five is that you know your sales calls will need to be planned around you working a full-time job, which can be you know a little bit more challenging. So I'll do one of those two things. Get someone to do the sales for you or work around your time zone so that you're doing outreach in time zones 
that uh, won't basically be taking calls between the hours of nine to five for you. The question, are you going to do another hoodie drop? Oh, that is a very good question. To be fair, I didn't even think about that. Um, so for those that don't know, last year, it starts off as a, as a joke and it sort of just went too far, basically. But uh, those in the pay program, so Lifestyle Design Mastery, as well as Console Dex, sort of my uh, paid coaching programs where I teach agency owners how to get started or teach agency owners how to scale, depending on which program you choose. Um, and we basically had this this hoodie, black hoodie, um, with basically more life on the front, and then we had unemployable on the back, which basically means that once you've seen it, once you've seen the matrix, once you've been through the programs, you will never work a proper job again because you already have too much awareness of what is possible, so therefore you'll be unemployable. Um, I said back then, I will probably not be doing another drop. Um, it was a one-time thing. Um, so probably not anytime soon unless you guys say you know do another drop or do another launch or anything like that um if we do it'll probably be the same hoodie again i probably will not will not create a new hoodie or a t-shirt or anything along those lines because like i said it wasn't the main priority it never was it never will be it was just a basically a, a joke slash just a little thing on the side um i don't really want to get into merch or anything like that Next question, how was the mastermind? The mastermind was very, very interesting, uh, very viable for me as well. And the feedback has been insane as well uh, from those that have joined. So for those that don't know, we have run two masterminds. Uh, Aaron Kai is my business partner on these masterminds uh, as well as myself. We ran a mastermind, a physical mastermind uh, in Mallorca. And then we did one in Ibiza as well. Um, where we basically teach agency owners how to scale further and then the goal sort of with these masterminds is to provide those that join with the information, with the blueprint, the knowledge and the know-how to add at least an extra 10,000 euros recurring to their agency by the end of the mastermind, which you know is either three or four days. So the first one was three days, the second one was four days. But yeah, both masterminds were an absolute success. Um, we have a lot of you know positive feedback, the testimonials to back it up. We got two cool after movies from it as well. Um, so the mastermind was definitely a success. We will probably be doing another one May of 2023. So if you guys are interested in that, go to sevenfigurmastermind.io and then basically join the waiting list. And then those who are on the waiting list will basically get more information on the next mastermind, the costs associated with it, and also you know what the topics are of the mastermind and so on and so forth. Um, another question, let's see. When are the More Life hoodies back? Uh, sort of the same as the hoodie drop. Um, probably not anytime soon unless you guys convince me otherwise. And then we have one more question. How many books do you read per year? So I don't really, there's no set goal in terms of book. I always read a book. I'm always reading a book. There's never a time where I'm not reading. Um, I will either read a book a week or a book a month or a book every two months. You know, it depends on how quickly I get through the book, if that makes sense. I don't necessarily give myself a goal of I need to read X amount of books per year or per day or anything like that. Um, I read when I want to read. I read, you know, when I want the information or I'll just read for the sake of it, you know, if, if I want to. Um, I don't force myself to read. I think that's also defeats the purpose of reading. 99.9% um, .9 of the books that I read are business related, entrepreneur related, mindset related, etc. There is always some kind of added value in the book. I don't really read a lot of fiction. Used to in the past, really enjoyed it. But at this point now, most of the time, it is a book that is relevant to what I'm doing or just a topic that I'm interested in. Right now, I am reading Permanent Record by Edward Snowden, basically, you know, the whole whistleblower story on um, you know, the American government, the mass surveillance, mass surveillance, and sort of how that, you know, became a thing. Um, not necessarily business related, but still interesting nonetheless, because it's about data, digital marketing is about data as well. So very interested how all of that came about. But um, I'd say this year, I've read about 10, 10 to 12 books, which is not a lot. We're now in September of 2022 at the time of recording this. So it's not a lot of books, but like I said, the goal for me is not necessarily to read as many books as possible. It's just to get as, um, just to read when I want to read and then just to get as much information as possible, but also to execute on those books. You know, the guy who reads four books and takes action is way more powerful than the guy who reads 100 books and just you know read more books and ne never really takes action because at the end of the day like books are just another form of 
media or content that you consume and it's only ever viable if you take action so yeah hope that answers your question and that is actually the last question of this q a at least from the screenshots that i made on my instagram maybe there's a few more questions on uh, instagram by now that i have not seen but if you've got a question that i haven't answered just leave in the comment below i'll either do another q a soon or i'll just answer in the comments but for now i'm gonna wrap this video here thank you so much for watching like share comment subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video